Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. Hey, have you ever wanted to have a point-of-view camera to record everything that you're doing, but you don't want to spend $1,500 to look like an asshole? Then we might just have your solution right here. Pivot Head Glasses. They record 1080p, they record audio, and they don't cost $1,500. Just don't forget to take them off before you go into a public restroom, okay? Well guys, I've been looking for a way to record point of view video with all three of my huge screens here, especially when I'm on the racing simulator. And I've tried some dumb things like taping a webcam on my head, but it always ends up shifting, moving, or shaking, and it, it's really unpredictable to know what your video is gonna look like at the end. So I was thinking about Google Glass, and I was looking at that, and I was like, oh, that could record video and everything, but they're $1,500. And you need some hoity-toity pass or something to be able to even buy one, like the demand is that great for them. So, I decided no, I'm gonna go look for something that's more just video centric because I don't need my glasses to tell me where I'm going and I don't need to be able to say Google picture, Google picture will people look at me like, are you retarded? Anyways, I found these, these are pivot heads. I picked them up from a company called Main Performance PC, the link's in the description if you wanna go buy a pair and I actually bought my racing simulator, my Oboto racing simulator, got it from the same people. Main Performance PC is really cool. Um, so these right here are professional grade, true point of view video recording glasses. And these are the Durangos, they come in different styles. This was the style that I liked right here. And they're the Chameleon. But they look like real glasses and the camera is basically right in the center. So let's go ahead and open this box up and take a look at these bad boys. It's actually a really, really nice box. Oh wow, comes in like almost like a display case box. Has a nice protective case for your glasses. That's actually really cool. And then here are the pivot heads themselves. Oh no, I tore the box. Oh no, oh no. All right, release. First thing I can tell you, they're very, very lightweight. That's actually a huge plus. I thought they were gonna be a lot heavier than that. That is cool. Let's go ahead and set those down. Make sure there's nothing else here in the box. All right, looks like it came with a USB cable. Oh, that's that's a breath of fresh air. It's not even a proprietary connector. So you can see it's just got a standard little micro USB. And then down underneath, you just open up the little flap here, plug it in. And there you go, and the plug's even on the bottom, which is nice. And it looks like on top, it looks like it has a little like jog dial. We'll figure out what that's for. And it's got one button on the back here. So it's basically only got three buttons to operate the whole thing. All right, opening up the glasses cover that they provided me. It looks like we've got some stuff in here. Um, looks like we have, what is this? Video recording IWR access pass. Not really sure what this is. It's got a little, uh, little Q QR code on it. Um, says see it my way. So I don't know, you must put that on your keychain or something, use it for something. Um, it comes with this cool wipe for cleaning your glasses. That's that's actually really cool. Comes with a quick start guide and a pivot head warranty. It's got a 90 day warranty, that's pretty common for electronics. And then it's got a quick start guide here that basically says what the buttons are. It looks like, uh, Let's see, there's a shutter button for video, a shutter button for photo, so that's two of the buttons, so whether you want to take a photo or a video, and then you got an LED recording light, an LED charging light, an LED power light, and then you got the power button. So it's the power button and basically whether you want to take a photo or a video. So that's really, really straightforward. And then the other cool thing is, it actually has the video uh, resolution and stuff like information on the LED color to tell you like what modes the camera's in and everything, and it's like permanently put on the bottom of the case. So that's cool, you'll never not have your directions with you. All right, well, since I'm gonna be using these for long gaming sessions, comfort's pretty much the most important thing here next to video quality. And it's got little rubberized grippers on the inside of the, the glasses on the little bands here, and it's even got a place where you can put on a lanyard. But just putting them on right now, I can tell you they're actually really comfortable. Uh, the frame, isn't in my field of view, that's really cool. So they at least made the frames big enough where it doesn't feel like it blocks my frame of view. Um, it provides no magnification and no color change. The lenses that just come on it are clear, but I think you can get other lenses for it. Um, 
and uh, it just feels like normal glasses. I mean, I can't actually see myself right now. I haven't even looked in a mirror yet. So we'll find. I'll find out the same time you guys do. Do these look good? I mean, do they look like just regular glasses? I mean, they do to me. I mean, other than they have this giant suspicious looking camera right here in the center. Like I said, take them off if you're going in public restrooms. I don't know, you might get tackled by security. But anyways, these are actually really, really cool. Now looking at the box for the specifications, it says that it has, let's see, has a Largan glass camera lens, continuous focus, autofocus, fi fixed focus, and macro focus. The field of view is 75 degrees. That's actually pretty good. Um, image sensor, uh, 8 megapixel Sony CMOS sensor. That's actually really good. It does 1080p at 30 frames per second, 720 at 60 frames per second. That's really cool. And 720 at 30 frames per second. The video format is MP4 H.264, which is the format that I use for all of my videos I upload to YouTube. So that is fantastic. Um, it only has mono audio. It doesn't have stereo audio, but it's mono audio at 44.1 kilohertz, which is fantastic. Um, image size options, you can do 8 megapixel, 5 megapixel, and 3 megapixel, which is pretty cool. Um, it even has time lapse option. You can do one shot a second, one shot every 30 seconds, four shots every 8 seconds, four shots every 30 seconds, 10 shots every 30 seconds, or five shots every 60 seconds. These are all little time lapse options. I'd imagine that'd be cool if you want to get those high resolution photos and then kind of put them together into a fast paced video. Um, auto focus, macro focus, the exposure. It can do bright and dim exposure, so I'm guessing there's software that I'll have to connect up to these to configure them, because I don't see any screen on them or anything like that for configuration. Um, and it also has burst options too for taking like 16 shots at a time. Um, the internal memory on it's eight gigabytes. That's actually pretty impressive for the size of them. And it's a USB 2.0 cable and charging data transfer. Has a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery, so it's got the latest battery technology in it. Um, that's actually really, really cool, guys. But the thing I'm looking for the most out of these is recording the screens. I want it to be able to see what I'm seeing when I'm playing video games, especially on the racing simulator. And I also want to see, uh, I also want to use it in future videos and stuff. If I'm doing an unboxing, how cool would it be to see my point of view while I'm unboxing something? All right, guys, so here's Pivot Head Desktop. This is the software that you use to manipulate and configure the Pivot Head glasses. Now, if you look on this side over here on the left, we have the video settings, and on the right, we have the image settings. You can come down here and select 1080p 30 frames per second, 720p 30 frames per second, or, or 60 frames per second, 720p. You can also change the focus and exposure. You can turn a myriad of settings on and off, like audio recording, face tracking, all that stuff. And there's a lot of quick settings down here at the bottom that are basically like, you know, social, spectator, power save. These all just configure gear the settings in different ways for to, to best suit those scenarios now if you're taking pictures using the back side of the pivot switch on the glasses you can actually set how many megapixels you want the pictures the exposure the focus the iso you can even do time lapse shots if you want so that you can like hit it and it takes a picture automatically every you know tenth of a second or one second thirty second four shots every eight second five shots every six seconds they're kind of weird intervals but yeah okay and then you can even configure a burst mode so that when you hold the button down, it just burst burst takes a series of photos. Um, and the image quality is actually pretty decent on the photos. I would say for something this small, I'd say it's on, on par with a GoPro. Now, one thing that you want to remember is anytime that you change the settings, you need to click on the apply settings and you need to click it on both sides. If you change the image settings or the video settings, if you don't click apply settings on both sides after changing all these settings, it's not going to save half of the settings. Or if you forget to apply the settings at all, you're going to close the app thinking you changed it, go record a bunch of stuff, come back and find out that it's not correct. So make sure that you always hit that apply settings. Hopefully that saves you guys some hassle because I ran into that one. <laughs> My car is so filthy right now. Just ignore all the Starbucks garbage on the floor. I do like my Starbucks. Ooh, it's cold. That 10 weight 40 oil does not like a I cold startup. We'll You'll actually. All right, looks like it's about 30 degrees outside. It's cold. So cold. Today's tech tip, if you put 10 weight 40 oil in your car and it's 30 degrees outside, let it warm up for a long time before you drive it. Trust me, you'll save your engine. You do not want to be driving around with super thick oil. I really like the pivot heads. They're pretty stylish and pretty low key. Uh, they do kind of look like squash glasses though. <laughs> you went to a squash court and you played squash um, or racquetball or something. So 
I suppose they would draw a little bit of attention. We'll see. We'll, we'll drive through Starbucks and see if anybody notices. Yeah, can I get a grande peppermint mocha with extra whip and a sausage breakfast sandwich? All right, and anything else for you? That'll be it. Okay, grande peppermint mocha with extra whip cream and sausage sandwich. We'll have your total for you at the window. Thank you. Hey. Hello, got one of these? Awesome. Woohoo! Oh, you got gloves on. That's smart. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> I did it one too without, and I'm like, never again. <laughs> it's too cold. I know. I'm kind of wishing I had some right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I, gave my, I have like all these pairs of gloves. I don't know why. And I gave my boyfriend like the half fingerless, half mittenless. Uh huh. Because he's like my steering wheel. So cool. I know. I have a pair of those, but I can never find the one for the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, thank you. <laughs> definitely slows down quite a bit with Multibond, like you can definitely see some lag. Uh, I have two 680 for the win editions. Oh, I'm on ultra. Here, let's knock. Here, we'll knock down to medium. Gotta have smooth gameplay. Oh, much better. Do, 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 do. Oh, hey. Come get me, dude. Yes, I hit him. All right, dude, what are we doing in the parking garage? Get out of here. Oh, we're capturing the flag. Derp. All right. Oh, that's our guy. Oh, I thought that was a bad guy in there. Oh, I broke the sculpture. Oh, look at that. When you blow up a piece, another piece grows back. See that piece grew back? Oh, another piece grew back. Dude, that's a pretty cool sculpture. Alright, what's going on, dude? Alright, crossing the bridge. Oh! Alright. I don't see anything on the map. Nobody down there, nobody down there. Oh yeah. Oh! Oh, enemy tank. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go play chicken with the tank, guys. Whee! 
punches. <laughs> ah, he thinks he's fixing his tank. Ah, <laughs> Uh-oh. Oops. All right, we'll see how this video looks on the pivot heads. Let's try something else. All right, I'm sitting in my racing simulator with the pivot heads on. Hopefully you guys can see everything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try a set of Corsa. Uh, a lot of people have been requesting it, so I figured we'll just do a little sneak preview. We're testing the pivot heads here. And then I'll uh, do a full set of Corsa video next week. Okay, we're getting about 100 frames per second across three screens. That's good. Let's get a little volume. There we go. All right, put it in gear. There we go. Pulling out of the pit. The force feedback in a set of course is actually really good. Um, the one thing you'll notice with force feedback steering wheels is different games give you completely different feelings. iRacing probably has one of the best force feedback models that I've used. Uh, but it's also one of those models where less is more. It, you, you really just feel the pressure and the weight of the car. You don't feel anything else. A set of course that feels like it does a little bit more than that, but not by much. Just getting a feel for the track here. Having three screens really helps because you can look into the turns. Get some speed down the straightaway here. Got my shifter in sequential mode. Okay, hard on the brakes. Downshift. Into the turn. Touch the apex. Go wide. Come in, clip it. There we go. Wide. Track out track in a little bit so far it looks like the only car it gives me is the Lotus but this is a copy I downloaded a while ago there might be a way newer version so I'll make sure I check for that before I uh, do the full set of course of video Little left foot braking. <laughs> Come on, baby. All right, let's try to get some speed here. Woohoo! Little drifting. It actually feels really good though. There we go. That was way better. Pivot heads, they're really comfortable to wear. I am getting a little bit of a glare from the screens on the lenses. You can tell these, these weren't designed to record computer screens. They're just, they're not. Um, but I may try to pop the lenses out of them. I'll send mail to the company and see if the lenses are removable. Sliding in. Coming in hot. Oh, went a little wide. <laughs> Oops. There we go. 
right near the rocks. That's cool. Trying to do a little drifting now. Oh, way too wide. Doing a little left foot braking, <laughs> trying to slide in the corners. Come on, baby, come around. Oh, oh, I'm in the kitty litter. The clutch, the clutch feels good too. It's not just on and off. You can actually feel the different stages of the clutch. Like I can ride the clutch. Like watch. See, I'm riding the clutch right now, just burning it up. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Slide it in. There we go. Drift it. Now they just need a USB clutch smell sensor on here so that you can smell your clutch burning. All right. Oop. Tucked in a little soon. If you just left foot brake just a tiny bit, you can get the nose to come in on this Lotus really easy. You can almost steer entirely with the brake. You just have to be real gentle going back on the throttle so you don't spin the ass end. Which is cool because this is exactly how it'd be on a real car, so I gotta give this simulation huge thumbs up. At least for the Lotus, this seems dead on balls accurate. Oop. That's why you don't downshift and let out the clutch in a turn. Okay, here we go. Big drift. Oh, oh. Come on, bring it around. There it is. I need to get my track IR hooked up also. Maybe I'll do that later too. All right, well, you guys get the idea. These pivot heads are actually pretty cool. We'll see what the video quality looks like. They're definitely not designed for recording computer monitors. But it's nice because you forget you have them on. It's a really easy and convenient way to just throw something on, hit record, and get everything from your point of view. Okay, we're gonna hit the wall, guys. Whee! Boom! Bumper cars, not a dent, the adamantium car. I don't know, guys, I, what do you guys think? I, I think they're pretty damn cool. So while I was testing these uh, right out of the box, the battery went dead because they didn't have much of a charge on them. And so I plugged them into the computer and sank them up and I noticed that, uh, that the software while you're configuring it, you couldn't actually use the camera while it was plugged in. So I went to the forums and looked and I found out that yes, if you only have them plugged into a power source, it'll power them indefinitely and you can actually use them to record video and take pictures. So I just thought about, remember that RAV power battery pack, that huge 14,000 milliamp hour battery pack that I did a review of? Well, check this out. Now I just got a cable, plug it in, they position the cable in like a really nice position where it just sits right in front of your ear. And now I have limitless power for this thing because this thing doesn't draw hardly any power at all. So now I can record the whole eight gigs. 
Now, to give you an idea, at 1080p, 30 frames per second, it looks like it's consuming about 100 megabytes per minute, which means you're gonna get about 10 minutes per gigabyte, and you have eight gigabytes. So with this battery pack attached, I should be able to get near 80 minutes of video recording from this thing. That's actually phenomenal. I can't get that from my GoPro for crying out loud. Well guys, I've had an absolute blast playing around with these pivot heads. These are a really unique item I've never seen before, and they do a pretty good job, all things considering. Uh, some quick pros and cons to them though. Uh, let's go ahead and just get the cons out of the way first. The video in low light is pretty noisy. Now, the noise is uniform and the picture is very sharp, which means if you have a program like Adobe Premiere or something like that with a good noise filter, you can actually restore the video back very, very nicely. I didn't want to do that in this video because I wanted to show you guys completely untouched video straight off the glasses. Um, so you can pretty much correct for that. And honestly, the GoPro had a similar problem in low light. So uh, the GoPro 2, not the 3. I haven't, I haven't tried the 3 yet, so I can't really attest to that. Now, the microphone in it is great. If you heard while I was driving my car, my car is incredibly noisy. It's really good at picking up my voice and picking up sounds that are close to me while kind of deadening out sounds that are far away. And I thought that that was actually a really cool feature. I actually plan to take these snowboarding with me um, because I think these will be a whole lot more convenient to throw on to cut down the wind shear and to record than having the GoPro sticking off of my helmet. Plus, it gives you a true point of view and you don't look like you're seven feet tall like you always do with the GoPro on. Uh, the other con is it does get a little bit warm on your temple on the side that contains the electronics after you use it for a while. I mean, it feels like you've got a pretty decent heat source. It doesn't hurt. Um, I wouldn't even say it's really uncomfortable, but it's definitely noticeable and you start going, oh, why, why is this heat on my head? Um, but if, again, if you're snowboarding or you're in cold weather, that would be awesome. Now, though the audio quality kicks ass, there was a little bit of static and a little bit of clipping um, in some of the video that I did. Uh, it seems like there is a little bit of noise. It might be the automatic gain control on these. I don't know if they can work that out with firmware later on, but the audio is clear and you can largely restore it. It's just, it's something that I did notice. Now let's get to the pros, guys. The pros are they're incredibly comfortable to wear. When you're wearing them, it feels like you're wearing just a regular pair of glasses. It doesn't feel like you're wearing anything bulky. It doesn't feel like you're somebody on the star bridge of the Starship Enterprise with some little thing sticking over here like shooting things into your eyes. They're just a pair of glasses. And the camera placement is perfect. What you see in real life is what you see in the video. And the field of view is great. I don't like how GoPro has such a wide field of view. I like that these have a narrow field of view because when I was doing stuff like looking at the screen when I was playing games and everything, there was more emphasis on what I was focusing on. It wasn't this giant fish-eyed lens thing, which I really don't like with the GoPro. Also, they're incredibly lightweight, and like I said earlier, they can be powered from an inexpensive external power supply. It doesn't even have to be their power supply. It can be uh, the RAV power unit that I showed you, which is inexpensive. You plug it in, and that'll allow you to power it through the entire eight gigabytes of recording, which is fantastic. Now, I couldn't really show you the 60 frame per second feature because YouTube basically transcodes everything down to 30 frames per second. But let me tell you, it was butter smooth, eerily smooth. Um, and I thought that that was really, really cool because if you do want to record videos, not necessarily for posting online, but you want that 60 frames per second for fast action. And if you want to edit it and slow something down, because then you can slow it down to half speed and it's still smooth, the 60 frames per second looked awesome and it didn't look like there was much degradation in video quality at all. Now, things that you guys should consider is these are glass cameras. I mean, they're, they're very, very small. They're designed to be compact, lightweight, and energy efficient, and something that you can just pull out, push a button, and record. Don't expect the same video quality as I have right here. What you're watching me on right now is a $3,500 Canon 5D Mark II with another $1,500 in lens and another probably $1,000 in audio equipment. Don't expect that to compete with these. For the price range of the pivot heads, the video is fantastic and the audio is fantastic for what they are. Don't expect them to be the most perfect video that you've ever seen in your life. But I will tell you this, if it's a sunny day outside and you have a lot of light and you go into the settings and you set these up for bright day and you record, the video quality is phenomenal. It's definitely limited by light, but when you drop that light level down, they still perform well, they just introduce noise. And that's common for any camera that I've ever used. Um, because when you have to work with a lens that's that small and you've got that little bit of light going in there, you have to work with what you get. And I think it does a wonderful job. And the compression on the video is fantastic. I didn't see a lot of compression artifacts. I didn't feel like the video was overly compressed. Um, and these are all really, really good points. And they do come in some other styles too. If you're not interested in this style, I personally just like this style. So that's why I got them. And uh, 
I still need to check see if they have interchangeable lenses, but they probably do. And to be honest, I'm going to keep using them for the racing simulator because I want to do video where I can cut in and out from a third party camera to my first party perspective. And I may even remove the lenses from them entirely if I can, because for doing stuff like this, I don't need the lenses. I don't need anything to cut glare. I'm not outside. I don't need the safety aspects of actually having glasses on. So what I want is the POV, and this does a phenomenal job of it. Oh, one other thing I wanted to comment on too is I'm sorry in a lot of my videos my head was leaning to the right. Uh, while I was recording over several days driving and collecting video and everything, and I played it all back, I was laughing because it was all crooked. I was like, hey, is the camera crooked in the pivot heads? No, guys, the camera is not crooked in the pivot heads. I'm crooked. I actually have a really bad scoliosis, so I tend to lean. When I'm sitting in my chair, I found out when I play FPS, I tend to lean towards the mouse. And when I'm driving in my car, I tend to lean towards the shifter. So watching the pivot head video back, I realized that I have this really bad posture. This is something that I just haven't noticed before because my brain just compensates for it. So I'm sitting there playing my games like this and I've never noticed, but now I notice. So the glasses are actually going to help me to realize that mentally and be like, oh, okay, sit up straight. Stop, stop doing this. Sit up straight. Stop doing this. So Honestly, I thought that that was kind of a cool thing that just happened along the way. I was, but, you know, it's it's funny the things that you do and you don't notice. So, guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. This is a really cool product. You guys know that I love interesting and kind of rare, inter, you know, rare technologies. And you don't see a lot of stuff like this. This is actually really, really unique. And the price point's pretty good in there to compete with GoPro and things like that. And it's got a lot of positive points going for it. So if you are a point of view recorder, you're into go-karting, you're into stuff like that, I think these will be a huge, huge boon for you. And I plan to wear these when I go to PGP this summer to do karting because I love go-karting. And I'm going to take these snowboarding and I'm going to take a mountain bike riding because one, they're just nice glasses to wear. They're comfortable. They cut down on the wind. And the other thing is, God, are they easy to use. All you do is push one button that comes on. There's an LED. You push one button to take pictures. You push one button to take video and you're done. And that's it. And you just forget about it. You ride and then later on you download the video and you're like, wow, I've got 60 to 80 minutes of high quality video of my ride outdoors. And if you were indoors or you're riding at light and it's low light, well then, you know, hey, you're going to have some noise in your video. But again, post-processing can fix that because the noise in it is very uniform. And as long as the noise is uniform, you can usually use an algorithm to take a lot of it out without losing a lot of that sharpness. So guys, again, hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. This is a really long video. I'm sorry. It's really hard to take a product that's this cool that has so many uses and cram it into a five minute video. So if you somehow made it to the end of the video, leave it down in the comments because you're truly the hardcore fans. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. It's time to get back to making videos. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.